For most of the kids in the neighborhood, summer days consisted of playing outside, riding their bikes to each other's homes, and only going indoors when lunch or dinner meals were served. Since everyone had a pool, or knew someone who did, it wasn't uncommon to hear splashing as early as 9 in the morning. The sun didn't keep its warmth hidden until midday, like in other places, so 9 was plenty early for pool time adventures. If it rained, everyone donned rain jackets and rain boots to take over one friend's house for video games and movies. Some kids liked playing in the rain, but no one wanted to hear their mothers yelling about catching a cold. Every kid played as hard as they could every day, seemingly determined to will away the impending school year and the end of entire days of play. Every kid except Celine. Celine curled up in her window seat with a blanket, a snack, and a stack of books within arm's reach. Her adventures consisted of romping through forests, sky castles, and fairy tale lands. She devoured books, sometimes becoming so engrossed in them that her parents had to remind her to eat, to shower, to go to bed. They tried in past summers to get her to go outside. After the fourth or fifth time of her coming home in tears and telling stories of kids laughing at her weirdness, they relented and allowed her to curl up in a room. Instead of pool toys and bicycle decorations, skateboards and scooters, they kept Celine fully stocked with books. What should I read next? Shakespeare? Mm. James S.A. Corey? <gasps> Zora Neale Hurston. She had read every book in her house, including encyclopedias and her father's college textbooks. She read the backs of cereal boxes and shampoo bottles. She even read stereo instructions. After catching her squinting at the words on television, on the rare occasion they could entice her to watch a movie, her parents took her to get her eyes checked. She was in fifth grade then. By the seventh grade, her eyesight had deteriorated significantly. Her doctor gave her mother the sad news that Celine was going blind. It was not her fault. It was a genetic condition, and Celine would have to give up her love of books. Naturally, at first, she was devastated. Books were her entire world. The idea of being without them left her feeling hopeless. After a brief period of grief, Celine remembered reading about Braille. Every weekend on Saturday mornings, her parents would take her to the library. It was there, in Celine's second favorite place other than her bedroom window seat, that Celine learned to read with her hands. Throughout the week, Leika, the librarian, would set aside stacks of books for Celine. The first stack consisted of books Celine had already read. She wanted to give her familiar stories as she began to learn. Celine's voracious appetite for reading forced Leika to order more and more books in Braille. Every Saturday morning, Celine would return a stack of books and pick up another. The books became increasingly larger and more detailed. By the time she was a senior in high school, Celine could read through books in Braille faster than she could read them when she had her vision. To people who didn't know her, it seemed that Celine was very lonely. She preferred her isolation and solitude to large crowds. She had a few friends in her classes. These were people around whom Celine didn't feel anxious most of the time. She could talk a bit about the latest stories she read or theories she'd studied. Her friends would listen whenever they could, but Celine knew they didn't have the same passion for reading that she had. She tapered her excitement slightly when she spoke to them, hearing the faint interest in their voices. There was only one person in her friend group who seemed to be interested in whatever she had to say. That was Samar. Celine loved using her sense of smell to identify the people closest to her. My friend Denise smells like apple-scented body spray, her favorite scent. My friend Aaliyah smells like sugar cookies. Her mother's a baker, and Aaliyah helps out at the bakery every day before and after school. Marcus, he's Aaliyah's brother, and he always smells like too much cologne and occasionally body odor. He's an athlete, and I think he runs everywhere he goes. Samar? Hmm. Samar smells like books in the summertime. It's one of my favorite smells. She'd first met Samar at the library. She'd grabbed her stack of books from Leika and waited patiently for her father to return the movies he'd borrowed. Samar struck up a conversation with her. They'd talked about brownies and how Samar preferred pecans over walnuts. She wasn't sure how to talk to him at first, but he went out of his way to make her feel comfortable. Her conversational reluctance soon turned into acceptance, which turned into excitement. 
Every Saturday morning when she went to the library, Samar was there. He laughed at her corny jokes. He listened when she talked way too much about whales or computer programming or the reason flamingos were pink. And he never seemed to tire of her. She felt guilty because Samar always made her feel like she was talking too much. She said that to him once, and he insisted that he didn't mind. She had a big grin on her face for the entire drive home after that. I knew very early in our friendship that I had feelings for Samar, but I would never tell a single soul. I will tuck my feelings for him away in my heart. I'm just so grateful I can share my love of books and reading with him. I'm settling for that. As special as he makes me feel when I visit the library or when we sit around with our friend group, I don't believe anything more than friendship is possible with him. I mean, he's a popular soccer player at our school. Everyone knows and loves him. A relationship with me would just be a hindrance to his life. His friendship means everything to me, and I am terrified of losing it. As their senior year progressed, Celine's parents encouraged her to think about her future. Would she go to university? Did she want to take some time off after school to figure out what she wanted to do? Was there one subject in all that she'd read that she found especially interesting? There certainly was. Celine was obsessed with love. The mountains of stories she'd consumed had one major theme, which was usually some form of love. She read about the love between men and women, between men and men, between women and women, romantic love, motherly love, friendly love, the love of a human and their pet, or a teacher and their pupil. She read about forbidden love, arranged marriages, broken hearts, unrequited love. She even read books on the similarities between generations of love, stories that transcended time and space. I can recognize love in places that I don't think others normally think to look. I hear it in my parents' voices when they speak to each other and to me. I sense it when I'm around people in committed relationships and strong friendships. (laughs) I can feel it when my friends let me pet their dogs or cats and I'm rewarded with warm tongues and laps full of purring fur. (laughs) I think the study of love is the most fascinating thing in the entire universe. She wasn't sure she'd ever admit this to her parents. She didn't think they'd understand that a young woman who devoured encyclopedias was obsessed with the idea of love. She didn't know what she'd do without her parents and was afraid that something as amorphous as the concept of love would seem silly for her to pursue professionally. Celine wanted to make them proud in whatever she decided to do. She did, however, tell Samar, He told her that he thought the study of love was admirable, even remarking that there was a lot of people who could use reminders of how to love more. They talked about how love is portrayed in movies and on television, and how Celine thought many writers got love completely wrong. It wasn't always grand gestures or sweeping someone off their feet. Sometimes the most loving expressions are the smallest. He agreed. Celine wasn't even sure how she'd explore love as a career. She toyed with the idea of becoming a marriage counselor, helping couples resolve their relationship with listening and patience. Therapy was respectable work, and she knew that her parents would support her desire to achieve a higher educational degree. She hesitated because marriage was only one kind of love, and it already felt limiting. I've contemplated becoming a social worker, helping people in my own community. I've thought about working at a school to support students who were introverted like me. I I even thought about becoming a wedding planner. None of these ideas feel right. I asked Samad what his plans are after high school. He listed a few options, all schools that would allow him to continue his soccer career, but he didn't sound committed to any particular university. He reminded me that there is no law saying I have to have my whole life figured out right now. So I decided to stop stressing about it so much and just enjoy graduation. The answer will come to me. I know it will. Football had become Samar's life. It began when he was seven years old. His father, an avid football player in his younger years, and a raging fan now, enrolled Samar in a football club for young boys. Samar had tried a few positions over his years of playing, but none suited him as well as that of goalie. He was tall, strong, and limber, as a good goalie should be. He loved it. For me, being on the field feels like I can do anything. I love my team, I love my sport, and I love the look on my dad's face when we play well. My parents are my biggest cheerleaders. 
I love that I can do something that makes them so proud of me, especially my dad. Football had afforded him some popularity throughout his school years. It had also opened some doors for him. He didn't tell Celine the breadth of it, but he'd been scouted by some prestigious universities for full football scholarships. His father was elated, and that made Samar happy. His parents worked extremely hard to provide for him and his sister. Samar wanted to do as much as possible for them. He also struggled with insecurities. He knew he was treated differently because of his popularity, both socially and academically. He felt enormous pressure to live up to those expectations. When he wasn't in school trying to keep up with his classes, he was expected to be at football practice. His father talked to him about football constantly. His team had performed well for the last few years, and now that he was university-bound, the conversation shifted to the national playing field, on which he would be viewed by a much larger audience. Some are never worried about performing well on the field. He worked hard and knew he was naturally talented. Honestly, I worry about keeping up with my university classes. I don't want to be just another dumb jock coasting by on my athletic prowess. I want to have a degree that will be there for me when my body won't allow me to play football anymore. I want more than just a life on the field. I want to build a life off the field, one I can be proud of. I mean, I can't play football forever, right? The weight of all those expectations was a major source of stress for Samar. The only time he felt unburdened was when he was with Celine. Celine had never seen him play football. How could she? Even though he knew she'd been born with her sight, she was blind when they met. He never bothered to invite her after they became friends because he knew she didn't like large gatherings. Football brought him so much joy. He'd hate for her to have a less than optimal experience at one of his games. When we are in the library together, I let her talk about whatever is on her mind. She never brings up football. <laughs> it's like a breath of fresh air for me. So, I've realized that I have strong feelings for her. And so I've upped my intellectual game. When she chatters at me about robotics, artificial intelligence, the flight patterns of egg grids, and the gravitational pull on the planets beyond Earth, I take notes. I spend whatever time I can between practice learning about the things she brings up in her conversations. She just inspires me to read more. She makes me ask questions of my own, you know? Our conversations leave me burning for more information, more knowledge, and more time with her. You know, I, I don't think I'll ever tell her how I feel about her. I don't know. It's just that she's brilliant, beautiful, and I don't want to hinder her in any way. Once she figures out her first step after high school, she'll take over the world. She still never makes me feel stupid, you know? It's just that I'm not equipped to keep up with her intellectually. I mean, to be fair, like... What would someone as brilliant as Celine do with a dumb job boyfriend anyway? Celine graduated from high school with honors. Rather than her usual Saturday morning appointment at the library, she was at the graduation ceremony. Samar helped her onto the stage to receive her diploma. Her nerves at their peak, Celine gratefully accepted Samar's hand onto the platform and was surprised that he was there waiting for her on the other side of the stage when she exited. She let the fear and worry of falling melt away and sat smiling in the front row. Samar sat next to her and smiled right along with her, having graduated with honors himself. He knew that he studied harder and earned his grades because of his friendship with Celine. The following week, Samar sat at the library desk, bothering his older sister Leka, the librarian, as she tried to check in books. It was almost 9.40 and Celine wasn't there yet. He was worried. She was usually punctual, arriving no later than 9.15 most Saturday mornings. He bounced his leg impatiently and stared at the clock that seemed to be mocking him. Where is she? Patience is a virtue, little brother. So is silence. He gave her a little smile to show that he was joking. She rolled her eyes and refocused her attention on the stack of books next to her. When the door slid open and Celine walked inside, gently clasping her father's arm, Samar felt relief wash over him. She smiled at something her dad said, oblivious to his worry or maybe even his presence. 
And he forgot he ever felt anxious in the first place. You're late, young lady. <laughs> Good morning. My dad and I went to breakfast. I might have talked his ears off over eggs and orange juice. <laughs> what do you do after graduation? I didn't see you at the reception. You know that's not my thing. We stayed long enough for my dad to get some cake and left. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad loves cake. <laughs> he took Celine's books from her and organized them the way his sister taught him, taking care to turn the spines so it would be easier to scan them into the computer. His sister gave him a knowing smile. She knew her brother had feelings for Celine. Samar gave his sister a glare, and she stifled a laugh as she turned back to help a patron. So, you've celebrated in your window seat? Not right away. My mom made us some food and we ate. I spent most of the afternoon reading, though. <laughs> <laughs> they walked to her favorite spot in the library while they continued chatting to each other. When she was seated, Samar pointed out the small board game he'd set up before Celine's arrival. What's this? It's a game. I'm going to teach you how to play football. <laughs> uh, why the sudden desire to teach me to play football? Samar's smile faded. He hoped Celine didn't notice. She had a way of sensing his mood shifts, even though she couldn't see his face. He didn't know how to tell her he had been accepted into his first choice university on a full football scholarship and would be leaving in the fall. He tried to keep his voice light as he arranged the pieces on the board. You know... Football is such a huge part of my life, Celine. I really wish you could see me play, but I know you don't like big crowds. It is really sweet that you're so considerate of me. Samar, I would literally go anywhere in the world if it would support something you love. Well, this is the next best thing. When I'm done with you here, you'll be the best goalie in the library. <laughs> then let's make me the best goalie. Okay. First, I'll teach you all the players. So you're the goalkeeper. So you're number one. Okay, and there are 11 players, right? That's right. I mean, our team is massive, but there are only 11 in the field at a time. Here are the left and right fullbacks. This is the center back. And the players are magnetic? Yep. And you move them around like this. See? I'll be the ball. And you can feel when you should try to move the players to pass and try to score. They spent almost two hours playing the game. Samar guided her hands across the board, teaching her the basics of how each player moved on the field. Lego only had to shush them twice, both times when the game got heated and Celine scored a winning goal. They both cheered and laughed and earned stern looks from Lega. Their last game finished, Samar started packing up the board. He was quiet, and Celine sensed a change in his mood. That was really fun. Thank you for teaching me how to play. Am I good enough to be on the team? Absolutely. You could give me and my teammates a run for our money. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you something, Celine. I got into university. Uh, Samar, that's... That's incredible. I, oh, I'm so happy for you. We should celebrate. Yeah, thanks. Um, my parents are really happy. And how do you feel? I mean, I'm happy too. This is a huge opportunity for me. Then why do you sound so sad? Because I'm leaving in three weeks. Oh. I, I won't be far. I, I should be able to visit on the weekends and during holidays when we're not practicing. This, this is a good thing, Samar. This is important and good and we should celebrate. Which, which, which reminds me, my mom helped me make these yesterday. I know you don't like walnuts, so I used pecans instead. Wow. You made these for me. I did. It's a thank you for being there when I walked across the stage. I was so nervous that I would fall and make a fool of myself, and when I felt you there, all my anxiety just went away. The only proper thank you is brownies. It's a law, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and I guess now it's a celebration, too. Samar bit into a brownie and sighed as he chewed. It was delicious. He ignored the don't eat in my library face his sister gave him and took another bite. Mouthful, he closed the lid and placed the container on the desk. Without warning, he turned and gave Celine a hug. At first, her body tensed. Then she sighed and hugged him back. The smell of chocolate, books, and summertime surrounded her. She allowed herself to melt into his embrace. 
for just a moment. To Celine with Love, an ARCS original written and directed by Jessica Giselle. Produced by Wishi Sapul, Jdev Hemrajani, and Francisco Ramos. Production coordinator, Isabella Rodriguez. Celine, voiced by Allegra Rodriguez Shivers. Samar, voiced by Sanskar Agarwal. Leka, voiced by Mina Hemrajani. Narrated by Lachi. Edited by Danny Souza and Wishi Sapul. In association with Ice Varia Productions and J. Giselle. Copyright 2020, UNS Productions Company, all rights reserved.